Hello everyone, welcome, I'm glad that you're here. In this video, I want to show you how we can use a virtualization technology that comes with Windows 10. Although it will not work on the home edition of Windows 10, it does work on the other editions and that's called Hyper-V. And Hyper-V is a built-in virtualization technology that you can install in your Windows and 10 environment. It doesn't come installed by default, but I'll show you how in this video how you can get it up and running. And we can use this in education because what we can do is we can install Hyper-V and then we can take the computer that we create using Hyper-V, move the disk file around and basically have clones of that operating system wherever we need it. So this is a great way. If you're working with students and you want them all to have the same applications, the same environment, you can basically go into Hyper-V, set one up exactly the way you want it, and then just copy that hard drive and distribute that out to students. This way, if something happens and the student's computer gets messed up, if they're working with that virtual machine, it's not a problem at all. All you do is you delete that hard drive, you put in the base copy or the template copy, and they're up and running in no time. You don't have to reinstall applications or try to troubleshoot it. You just have Hyper-V installed and you use the Hyper-V disk in order to give them a template computer. I'm going to demonstrate that in this video using Ubuntu Linux. So, and that's one that is a free operating system. So you're not having to pay a licensing cost. Obviously, if you're doing this with a Windows 10 or a licensed operating system, then you have to make sure that you're entitled to use those licenses. But a lot of times Microsoft gives students free licenses as well, so they can launch that virtual machine and they can go in and use their academic license. It's not free, it's an academic license, but they can use that license in order to activate Windows or they could use a trial version of Windows if they're just trying to do something quick. It'll all make sense as you watch this video and I hope that this is useful for you. Let's go have a look. Hyper-V is not installed by default, so we're going to go to turn Windows features on and off. When we go in here, we'll have a whole bunch of features. Hyper-V has two. We have the management tools to manage it or the platform to run it. We want to both run it and manage it on the same machine. So we'll select both and say OK. It'll now search for all of the files that it needs, apply those changes, and this will necessitate a restart of your computer. And that's because it's going to put a hypervisor platform in there for us. So we'll restart the computer. And when we restart the computer, we'll now have Hyper-V installed. Hyper-V can be found by just typing in Hyper-V. And we have both a quick create option as well as the Hyper-V manager. We're going to run it as administrator. So I'm going to run the Hyper-V manager administrator. And I can also, by the way, uh, go in, connect to my local machine. That's my machine. And I can go in and create a new virtual machine directly here. I can also access quick create from here, which I'll do for the first one here. I'll choose Ubuntu and we're going to go ahead and grab the Ubuntu 20.04 or I could select the local installation source if I had the ISO and we'll go ahead and install it. It goes pretty quick. I edited that so it went a little bit faster. We then can go into the settings where I can see, for example, how much memory I have. I'll increase the amount of memory if I want to. Um, you'll also notice it has dynamic memory, so it will allocate memory on an as-needed basis. And I can also give weight to the memory if I want the machine to run a little faster number of processors and my hard drive is quite interesting as well by default it's going to go into documents uh, hyper-v and I'll just accept that for now and my network I'm just going to take the default switch so now we're going to connect to it this opens up the window that allows me to see what's happening when I hit start I'll actually see the process of that Ubuntu installation starting up I'll go ahead and hit enter or just wait for it to default to the Ubuntu installation and Ubuntu starts first time. I'll choose my language, choose English there. We'll continue with that. And now it'll go in. I'll choose default keyboard, say continue. But there's many choices with Ubuntu. It automatically detected where I am because of my IP address. I'll say continue. That's my time zone. And then I'll have to put in my name, give my computer a name. I'll give myself a username. Might as well be the same. And then I'll put in a super secret. Once that password's in there, I'll have to enter it again just to make sure that I spelled it correctly. It'll also rate the strength of the password. And then I'll go in and set it to log in automatically and I'll say continue. It'll go ahead, configure the Ubuntu for me. Life will be good. And I now have a cool Ubuntu machine running on my Windows machine using Hyper-V. And I can access it anytime. 
I can also go in and sign in and connect to various different accounts. This is just part of the Ubuntu installation. So I'll just skip through these in terms of, you know, patching and some of the opt-in programs that I have. Um, I'm going to say on this one here, I'll just keep it sort of generic. So now I've got this machine running here and I can do all sorts of things. I can go in and open up a browser. I can surf the internet. I can learn how to program in a bunch of different languages. I, be, I get the full Ubuntu experience, the desktop Ubuntu experience here, which is nice. It, it can help students learn Linux and such. Although I have another video where I show you how to install Linux, uh, Linux on Windows 10. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off this Ubuntu. So we'll go ahead and power it off. And we're going to do something kind of interesting here. So once I power it off, I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the hard drive that was created when I installed Ubuntu. So you can see it's here. What I'm going to do is go in. Now, when I look at my machine, I've got the one virtual machine here, the Ubuntu. And the top part here is settings for the entire environment. And these are settings for that specific virtual machine. So I'm going to go in here and look at the uh, processor, or sorry, the hard drive, and you'll notice that the hard drive is stored here. I'm going to browse for it, and you'll notice I have a hard drive here that's about 6 gigs in size. I'm going to go in here and copy that 6 gig file, and I'm going to put it in another location on my computer. So I'm going to have a, a two copies, two 6 gig files. So I'll go into my C drive here, and I'll create a new folder, and we'll call it maybe... Uh, something like a copy of Ubuntu. So we'll have a copy of it here. So, and I'll go into that folder and we'll just paste in that six gig file. So it's a pretty big file. It'll take a few moments to copy over. I'll fast forward the video so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Actually, I guess I won't fast forward the video. It's pretty quick. So you can see that it copies over that six gig file. And then I'll have basically two copies of that virtual hard drive. Why is this cool? Well, this could have been me putting it on another computer altogether. I could have copied it and put it on your computer. Could have copied it and put it on a student's computer. The point is that I have it in two locations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to connect to it, so I'm going to cancel the browsing. But I do have it in two places. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. And this time when I create the virtual machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach, you know, I'll give it a name. So I'll call this uh, Ubuntu 2 or 2.0 or something. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the virtual machine in a different location. I'm going to store it in that folder that I just created. So I'll go back to my C drive and I'll go to that copy of Ubuntu. That's where I'm going to store the virtual machine definition files. And then what I'm going to do is, in, and generation 2 just is the more modern generation. I chose that. I'm going to give it 8 gigs of RAM. Now remember, if I'm running this at the same time as the other machine, we'll put it to a default switch. If I'm running at the same time, it's using those resources. I'm not going to use an existing disk. I mean, sorry, a new disk. I'm going to use an existing disk. I'm going to browse to that location where I copied that Ubuntu. I'm going to use that disk. That's the copy. So here we go, I have the copy. I'm going to say next to this, and I have my machine here. Now, I chose a lot of RAM, and it's not going to be too happy about that. But let's connect up to it. I'm going to connect into it. And when I connect into it, notice I now have two little windows here, right? The one was the virtual machine that's that I originally made, and now I have this virtual machine that I made. So I'll start up the one I originally made, and you'll see Ubuntu will start. No problem, there we go, Ubuntu is starting. It's going to be quite quick. It's going to automatically log in as Frank, and you'll see Ubuntu show up. The other machine, so here we go, Ubuntu is going up. The other machine has a problem, not enough uh, memory. So my machine, my host machine, doesn't have enough memory to support both of these running at the same time. No problem. I'll go into settings, and I'll just reduce the memory. I don't need much memory anyways on this machine, so I'm just going to reduce it down to, say, 2 gigs. So I'll make two gigs of memory for this Ubuntu, and we'll go ahead and apply that and say, okay, now when we start it up, look what happens. Just say continue there. It's going to boot Ubuntu as well. These are two copies of Ubuntu running. So I have the first copy, which was the original machine I made. Then I copied the hard drive to a new location, and I started a whole new Ubuntu there. So imagine if I wanted every one of my students to have this. It wouldn't be a problem at all. Just copy that virtual hard drive around, have them start it up in Hyper-V. It's quite handy. 
So there you are. Hyper-V is a great virtualization tool. I have other videos on this channel using another tool called VMware Workstation, which is one that I use in more of a data center enterprise kind of environment, but both work very well. In fact, I like both a lot and you can even convert one to another. That's another idea for another video. Anyhow, let's uh, comment down below if you have any questions and uh, ask any questions that you might have and we'll make some more videos on virtualization if that's something that you think is useful in your classroom. Thanks again for watching. Password.